YouTube channel. Today we are going to be sublimating on a coffee mug, travel coffee mug. This is a 15 ounce coffee mug. And for those of you that don't know um, anything about sublimation, um, sublimation is uh, the process where um, a special ink is printed out on paper, sublimation paper, and um, when it's the ink is heated to a certain temperature, which is normally about 400 degrees, um, the ink infuses, it like bakes into the fabric and you get very vibrant colors. Um, when you sublimate on something else other than a t-shirt, the t-shirts have to be 100% polyester, which is really kind of a downfall. Um, who wants to wear polyester? Um, but there's a lot of other things that are out there that you can use to sublimate on cotton t-shirts and we'll explore those later on um, down the road. But today we're gonna to be doing a, we're gonna be using a coffee blank, a coffee mug, travel coffee mug blank. And for the blanks, they usually cost a little bit more than just like going to Walmart and buying a stainless steel coffee mug or something of that nature because they have to have a special coating. They have to be dipped in a special coating in order for the ink to bake in to the item. So you can't just take a, a regular coffee mug or um, go to the Dollar Tree and get a coffee mug from the Dollar Tree and try to sublimate on it. The, wink, the ink will not infuse into it. It has to be dipped. And so sublimation blanks um, such as keychains, these uh, tumblers, mugs, things of that nature, those blanks are going to run you a little bit more money. But today we're going to be making this. This is going to be for one of my co-workers. Um, when I go back to work, I just wanted to bless her with a little gift and she is a Florida Gator lover. So we'll be putting some images on here and I'll just walk you through the process. Okay. So come on, let's get started. Okay. So let's get started. So what you do is you'll take your blank and, um, I have what I have here is a little tape measure and I use this quite often to figure out what size I want my images here. Now I'm not going to totally sublimate the whole image. The background is gonna be left this um, shiny white color here, but I am gonna put um, two images and then her name also on, on the back end of the, um, on the back end of the, uh, the mug. So what I do is I just kind of get a roundabout estimate on how big I want that front image to be. So I'm thinking about four inches in width and then three inches, three, no bigger than three inches in height. So um, I'll usually just, just write that down. So it's four inches by three inches. Three inches, this is in height, and four inches is the width that's going across. So that's the size of the image that I'm going to um, be utilizing to make, to place on this um, mug. Okay, so next we're gonna go to the um, Canva. That's where I design um, my images in Canva, and then um, we'll print it out on my sublimation printer. My sublimation printer is not a um, true quote unquote sublimation printer. What I did was I uh, transformed a um, eco tank printer, an Epson eco tank printer. I purchased one. Um, the biggest it prints is eight and a half by eleven. Um, so if you're trying to print something bigger than eight and a half by eleven, I'm limited to that, which. Basically, I've never really done anything or tried to print anything bigger than eight and a half by 11. Um, but I took the, I bought an Epson EcoTank printer and instead of putting the inks, you know, that go into the, um, each tank um, on there that come with the printer, I ordered sublimation inks and you can order sublimation inks. Some of the places um, have them according to the type of Epson. If you put your model number Epson in that you have, they'll have kits for it. And so you just dump that ink, the, the uh, 
sublimation ink. You dump that ink into the printer and you let it run its course and go through and so on and so forth. And then you're able to um, utilize it as a sublimation printer. I also ordered off of Amazon some sublimation paper. It's called A-Sub paper. And um, it's a little thicker than copy paper. Um, some people do use copy paper. They don't use um, a special sublimation paper, but I prefer to use sublimation, but um, sublimation paper. So I do use a sub paper and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on. But now let's go ahead into Canva and go ahead and design this cup. Okay, so I've logged into Canva and up here to the left, it says create design. So I'm gonna click on that and then down here it says custom size so i'm going to hit custom i'm going to change my size to inches and then the width was um going across i said was four inches and then the height was no bigger than three inches and then i'll just hit create a new design and then it'll pop up this is a four by three. It, it looks bigger, but <clears throat> when you actually download the file, it is the dimensions that you specify. Um, next, I'm going to go over here and we're going to hit upload images. And then I'm gonna hit upload files right here. I have some files on my desktop. There's normally where I, where I save them and I'm going to go ahead and select this file and you'll see it'll be it'll have a little thing like the water's filling up or whatever and once it's complete um, that'll go away so I'm going to use this image I'm gonna click on that and then it um, it'll go into here and it just says this girl loves her gators and I'm going to go ahead and make that bigger because now remember this whole thing right here is the dimensions on what and how you want it the size that you want it to be um four by three so we can make this bigger and i don't want to get it outside of the outside of the box but I don't want to cut anything off either. So I think this is going to go ahead and um, be the size. Because if I go out to the side, you see how it, it moves the image. So we're going to have to improvise so that we don't cut anything off here. Gators and make sure that the, this up at the top is there okay and so <clears throat> excuse me that's gonna be the front and then down here I'm just going to hit um, let's scroll down here oh, let me scroll down move this because I don't I add a page so there's when you hit add a page it, what it'll do is it'll add um, another page with the exact same dimensions. So then I'm going to go back over here to upload, upload files. And then I think I'm going to put just, um, Florida Gators. And so it is uploading. Now we'll just insert it and then I'll just make this as big as I can get it. And I'm not gonna go too big with that because down here at the bottom, I'm going to hit the T on my keyboard 
and what it's going to do is it's going to um, insert a text box for the paragraph here and I'm going to take this out and I want to go up here and I want to change my font and I want to look for something that is possibly similar to the font that's on here. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same, but sometimes I just try. And you can always play around with it. When you see these little crowns over here, that means you have to have Canva Pro in order to utilize those um, fonts or any of the images that you look up on here. That means you have to have the Pro version of it, which I do because I don't like to be in the middle of designing something. I'm going to try this Escazar Semi-Bold. And then I'm going to type her name, Miss Masters. And we are gonna work with the font. And let me click off of that and try to... I need to move this up a little. And then I'm going to also up here click on the color and when you do that it'll show you the colors that right here on this line it's showing me the colors that are in um, the image that I chose over here so right here in the middle you'll see a little piece of the image and then it'll show you the colors that you have so I think we'll do Miss Masters in that orange okay and so once you have that, you're just going to hit, um, you can save it up here and I'll just put um, FL Gators. Okay. If I can spell FL Flaters, it's G-A-T-E-R-S. FL Gators. Okay, and so then what you do is you go over here to where it says File, and you're going to hit um, Save All Changes, and then go back up File, Down, no, what did I hit? Okay, let's just close out of that. Um, file, and then we want to hit Download. And so what will happen over here, you'll see where it asks you if you want to save your download settings. It's a total of two pages that I have, and then I'm just going to hit download. And then this will pop up here, and it's telling you that it's downloaded. And then obviously over here in your downloads, you see it over here. And it'll come as a zip file because it's two pages. So then what we do, I do, is just... Close out of this, go to my downloads, hit the download, this is the Gator file, I open it up, there's two pages, I'll pull them out, put them on the desktop, close that out, I'll open up the Microsoft Word. And also when you print uh, anything that you sublimate, it has to be printed mirror. It has to be mirrored when it's printed. Okay, so let's do a blank document. Um, let's see, the layout I want to do, orientation is landscape and my margins. I'm going to do very little margins here. Then I'm going to hit insert picture. 
um, from this device. It's going to come up to my desktops. And then I'm going to put this picture in here. And what I do when it inserts the picture, I always go to picture format up here. And over here to the left, it will show you the, the dimensions. I just always double check before I print out. And the size is three by four, okay, which is what we wanted. So then um, on here, so I don't believe in wasting paper. Do a couple spaces. Go back up here. Insert picture. This device. And put Florida Gators Miss Masters. Go up here to picture format. Double check the size. Three by four. We're good. Okay. And now we are going to print. So let me set up the printer and then I'll walk you through that. Okay, so this printer down here is my sublimation printer. I was telling you that it's an Epson EcoTank printer. It's an EcoTank 20, 2800. And it comes with these color inks, which are regular printer inks, but um, I don't use those. I order the sublimation inks which comes in those colors too, but it's like I said, it's a special ink. And then um, they come with the, you can order according to your printer that you do have. Like I would order an Epson, Epson um, Inkle Tank 2800 sublimation ink. And the nozzles will be set for here and you just put those in there. You start up the machine, the printer, like you normally would, let the ink run through and so on and so forth um, with it. And it's, like I said, it's eight and a half by 11. That is my sublimation printer. And this right here is the A-sub sublimation paper. Um, this is what I get off of Amazon. And like I said, it's a little thicker than um, regular copy paper, but um, some people, they do go ahead and use uh, regular copy paper for their, um, to sublimate on. I heard you can do it, but um, I just go for that professional look. So we'll go ahead and load this in the paper and get our printer settings um, together and we'll go ahead and print this out. Okay, so um, in order to print this out, we have to mirror the image for the sublimation. Um, so what I do is I go to File, Print, and then this is my EcoTank 2800 um, printer that I will be using. I go to Print Preferences, and then um, on here I make sure that it's landscape, it's, um, says premium presentation matte paper is what I'll choose. It is definitely color. color. Uh, we don't want two-sided on there. I'll go up to more options up here and then I'll go into um, color correction custom. And down here, it tells you to mirror. There's a box you can check to mirror your image and you definitely want to check that. We want to mirror our image and then for um, color correction I hit advance um, this pops up and I'm going to hit actually I'm going to hit color controls over here and then I'm going to hit a Adobe RGB and then I'm going to adjust my colors over here nine these are what work best for me seven 15 and four, then I'm going to hit okay. And then we are going to hit okay. And then we're going to hit print. And we'll pull that off the printer in just a second. 
Okay, so I'm back and I've pulled this off of the printer and um, for you, it's showing, it's showing it the correct way, the way that it's going to be um, placed on the mug and sublimated onto the mug. But looking at it from my view, it, it is mirrored. Okay, and so, and that's what you're looking for. You want it, when you look at it, it's going, you want it to show that it is mirrored. Okay, so that when you go ahead and turn it over and cut it and place it on the mug, it's going to show that it's um, the correct way that it's supposed to be on the mug. Okay, so um, let me adjust this camera a little bit because we need to cut. And I just want to pull it down so that you can kind of see what, what I'm working with. I've got a little Tim Holtz paper trimmer here. And um, what I'm going to do is just put it in there and just cut it down to a more manageable size um, for me. And yes, I do waste a lot of this paper. It's not too, too expensive, but I, I need to be a better steward over, over it. But we're just gonna trim this down to a more manageable size here. those two items there and then um, what we're going to do is we are going to take the mug I'm a clean as I go crafter and I don't know if you can see this but this is heat transfer tape and this is what you have to use when you um, place um, things to be sublimated. You have to have a tape that can withstand 400 degree temperature on here. So this is heat transfer tape. It's a special tape. Um, I usually just remove the top from the mug because we really don't need that till afterwards. And then what I normally do is, let me move that out to ways it doesn't get wet. I have a little bit of rubbing alcohol that I keep in a thing and, and, and I'll just spray it. And then I'll take a paper towel and wipe it off. And what this does is it just removes any um, dirt or debris or anything, fingerprints that may be on the mug that you don't want to see when you go ahead and get ready to sublimate, okay? And so um, unless I know for sure that the person is left-handed, I always um, prepare my mugs for the right hand. So this is me holding the mug in my right hand and the front of the mug will be right here. So with that being said, I want to put uh, this girl loves her gaiters on the front. So what I'm doing is just kind of eyeballing it and centering that on the front. And what I'll do is take some heat transfer tape, making sure that it's straight. And I'll just take some heat transfer tape to um, hold that in place. And you wanna make sure that you, you tape all the way up to the top, all the way through the bottom because when you sublimate, if there is any air that gets in, like I'll probably wind up taking a long piece of tape here. And going across the bottom, just to make sure that there is no air seeping up in here. And then I'll just run that over the bottom. Let me just grab a pair of scissors. So 
that I can cut that excess off. And be careful when you put anything sharp against the um, the cup because sometimes you can scuff. I have scratched off some of the uh, coating, special coating that's on there. It's, it can easily be scratched on there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and work on the back. And this is says Florida Gators, Miss Masters. And we'll go ahead and center that. on the back as such. And I just want, I think I want to move it up a little bit. And when you're using a Cricut mug press, you have to be very cautious about the handles because when you put this in the mug press, there is a half of inch without, between on both sides of the handles that does not get sublimated. That sticks out of the mug press. So you wanna make sure um, if you have an image or anything, make sure that it's at least a half inch away from that handle because what'll happen is it's not going to be directly in that heat and it'll come off on, it'll come off on the mug as a blur, it'll look like it's blurred on there. And that's because it didn't get a full press because there is no, um, there is, I'll show it to you when I put it in the heat press. But yeah, you wanna just make sure that there's, when you tape it down, that it's flat and it's tight and that there's no air in there when air gets in there that's when you get a blurred image and to be honest with you with enough trial and error i've had enough blurred images i call those my bloops and um i would either give them away or sell them for less because they are they did have a bloop on them so Lessons learned, just make sure that your images are airtight, okay? And that looks good, I don't know if you can see that, how I've got it sealed in. I did not seal this side and I think I need to go ahead and put it on here just so. It's pretty, the mug press is pretty pretty tight. When I used to do them before I got a mug press, I used to do them in a little convection toaster oven and um, there was nothing pressing on it to kind of like hold that image in there so that it, till it, so that it would bake in there. You're just actually setting it in the oven. So I had more bloops, bloopers with uh, the convectional oven than I did with the Cricut mug press. Very good investment, very good investment, Cricut Mug Press. Um, okay, so let's take it on over to the Mug Press. Okay, so this is a Cricut Mug Press. Um, I just turned it on, and so you'll see up here that it is that it is on. And what happens is these, once all five of these light up, you'll go ahead and you'll get a beep. It'll beep and it'll let you know that um, it's ready. Then you'll go ahead and put your mug in here, press that down, wait until all those lights light up again. It'll beep, tell you that it's ready, pull that up, and then you'll let it cool, and then you'll remove the heat transfer tape, and voila. So let's let this heat up, and then we'll get started. Okay, so the light is green, letting me know that it is ready. I'm going to getting my camera angle right you guys um, go ahead and stick that in there I always try to make sure that I have the, the handle here centered go ahead and press that down and then you'll see the lights here will start blinking once all five of those have lit up your mug is ready you'll pop you hear beep and you'll pop that open and we'll go ahead and pull it out okay i have gotten all four lit up the machine has beeped 
going to go ahead and open that. I'll use it to turn it off. Pull that out. And when you can see the words that come through, I don't know if you can see that on both sides. That's lets you, that's a kind of an indication that it's done pretty well. So what I do is I usually have this little silicone rubber mats. I'll let it sit, um, cool off, and then we'll go ahead and unpeel the tape and you'll see the vibrant image. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're back and it's cooled a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and start peeling off this um, heat transfer tape so we can see this lovely image, these lovely images. And every time I sublimate something, it's just, I'm just in awe because it's like, wow. You know, you see it and it's just something printed on paper. And then um, when, you, when, it, when you take the paper off, you guys ready for this? Are you ready? Check it out. Wow. See how vibrant the colors are on that? That is awesome. Okay, let's do the other side. You ready? It's like Christmas to me, you know, to pull it off and see what it looks like. Wow. Love it, love it, love it. She's going to love it. This girl loves her gators, Florida gators, Miss Masters. And there you have it. I wanna thank you for watching today. Um, if you like what you see, hit the like button below. You can also subscribe. I would love to have you as um, one of my followers. And until next time, be blessed. Have a great day.